Okay. Yep. We're on? Yep. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our show, if anybody indeed will be watching. We are... Wait, did I tell you who this guy is? You want to tell us? <laughs> I'm Rob. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rob, in case you didn't know. Yes. Um, we don't know anything about him, except for him being Rob, and that he likes to be called Dr. Rob. But anyway, let's get on with the show, everybody. It is Father's Day this weekend in the mm -hmm. United States, so happy Father's Day to any yes. dads out there. Don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to get your dad a boring <laughs> gift, everybody, if you uh, were not aware that it's Father's Day. And we are in the middle of, well, not quite in the middle yet, but in the Apostles' Fast that precedes the great feast of Saints Peter and Paul. So... I'd like briefly everybody to reflect on something I already reflected on this week in the Daily Reflections about something St. Paul writes about himself. This is just to uh, encourage the topic uh, that we're contemplating mostly this season, also on our audio podcasts, okay, uh, of what it means to be a church apostolic. We say that we believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Well, the word apostolic meaning pertaining to the apostles or connected to the apostles. It's, that's the general sense of the word. Um, or char characteristic of the apostles as well is something to contemplate this season. What are the characteristics of the apostles? And one of them, I think, that we learn about from St. Paul, who did share with us a lot of his person and personality and journey, is what he says, if you'll bear with me, everybody, I just want to cover this famous quote where St. Paul asks, uh, says that he asked the Lord to take away this thorn in the flesh that he was uh, given. Now, just listen to this. This is from the second epistle to the Corinthians, okay, in chapter 12, where St. Paul talks about how God revealed to him that his grace should be sufficient and is sufficient in the apostle and that uh, God's power is made perfect in our weakness. So my point here will be, after I read this passage, is to talk just a little bit about how our imperfections, our shortcomings also, are all also serving a salvific purpose for us. Uh, often, my friends, and that when perfectionism creeps in as if it's a virtue and starts to uh, pull me back from doing what I'm supposed to be doing because I think I can't do it well enough anyway, well, I have to expose that thing that's calling itself perfectionism that actually is probably something else, something not very glamorous at all, okay? Um, perfectionism often is procrastination in disguise, or sometimes even depression in disguise. Somebody not wanting to uh, really live sure. his or her life saying, well, I'm going to, no, that's not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to wait until everything's just right. right. So I'm not going to have fellowship with my friends because the weather isn't nice enough, or I'm going to back away from, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, from, from a relationship that would be good for me. Maybe I don't really approach sufficiently, face sufficiently my work responsibilities. I don't know. This could be in various areas, but it could also be in the area of our spiritual life that we sort of also have a perfectionism, um, you know, somewhat maybe subconsciously thinking, uh, well, I'm not the real deal, you know. We even have this amidst, in the midst, uh, amidst lay people, mm -hmm. uh, sort of maximalism, a mistaken, uh, I think, vision of things where people think, well, you know, maybe if my spouse dies before me, <laughs> there's that quiet hope. <laughs> That's some dark humor there. Then maybe I'll become a monastic at the end of my life and really start praying, you know, like we're putting it off because we think that there's some there's this perfect way. Um, that's a false vision of it, of course, mm -hmm. also of monasticism. 
Um, but anyway, perfectionism, it's uh, not a virtue, okay? It's not a virtue. So let me read from St. Paul so that we can get on with the rest of the show. So this is what St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. One of these great revelations of St. Paul, the hero of our tradition about his own journey. And to keep me from being too elated by the abundance of revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I besought the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I will all the more gladly boast of my weaknesses, writes St. Paul further, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake, for the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. End of quote from St. Paul, everybody. So he's not afraid anymore, okay, to live with whatever it was that this thorn in the flesh was, this, this great apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, so my point today is sort of little thought for today, and I know I wrote a reflection on it this past week, um, but I've been thinking it ab about it more because I sort of have been observing how perfectionism can creep in to various areas of life and indeed keep us from living life in humble acceptance, in humble acceptance, everybody, of things and people including myself, as they are, and not as wishful thinking might have them be, all right? Or not like sometimes our unreasonable demands of ourselves or others might uh, be waiting for them to be. Okay, the other thing now, moving on, that I want to mention, I am well aware, I am well aware of the World Cup being played. And as you see, I remain neutral as yeah. far as possible okay. not disclosing Good. not disclosing no bias towards any particular team exactly not disclosing who it is that i invariably support every time the world cup rolls around Fair so enough. right now when we started uh filming this um iceland and argentina were at 1-1 yeah i think maybe that's changed by now but it is an important game so i appreciate it if some of you showed up um, Rob here mm -hmm. is with us only one more time after this. Yep. You know that he's moving to Berlin. Yes. <laughs> he's moving to Berlin, and the only reason we can even, uh, yes, begin to uh, accept this mm -hmm. is that it's Germany. Yes. And right now, during the World Cup, we have a soft spot for Germany. <laughs> so we are giving them Rob. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, just as our... Oh, no, is it guess happening? what else is happening today, everybody? This is really funny because I thought it would happen while we're... To see if it's, if the it's Gay Pride happening. Parade is passing under our windows today. It's really huge in Vienna. <laughs> we, we have no control over this. They call it the Rainbow Parade. Are they passing by, Rob? Not yet. Have they blocked the, the highway? Yeah. Or no, no, not yet. No? No. Who's playing the music? All right, everybody, this is an action-packed episode, yes. obviously. All right, let's move on to the exciting segment of what's in the... Oh, my goodness. Everybody, oh, yeah. we actually... haven't been paying attention to your comments. Yeah, let's do some comments real quick. Let's do some quick comments. All right. Hello, everybody. We love to see you. Yeah, brother... Enjoy the music. <laughs> brother Thomas is with us. Hello, I... nice to see you both. Did you hire this band? I did. Rob, for yeah. this show? Yeah, I it's, thought it would be a nice touch. It's like a nice goodbye touch for yes. Rob. And Cynthia is with us. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, Brother Thomas and Cynthia. Yes. Both our good friends. Yes. And Ce Cecilia. Oh, Cecilia is with us again. Good She's evening, Sister good evening. good evening, Cecilia. She's in India, I think, right? Oh, yeah. Pete. Pete Ver is here. Hi, okay. Sister and Rob. Oh, where did it go? Hi, All right. Um, Marius Philip. Good afternoon to everyone from London. Hello, London. Marius yeah. Philip from London. Uh, Cynthia says she woke up. Woke up for, for you guys on my Saturday off. Oh, well, thank you very oh, much. Oh, thanks a lot, That's Cynthia. Really sweet. It is sweet of you. Uh, 70 AD is back with us. Hello, everyone. Well done, Russia and World Cup. 
I know, yes. right? Five zero. Wow, we mm. were going crazy. Yeah. It was really amazing. You know, yeah. Russia is not usually that all that confident uh, when it comes to their soccer team. <laughs> okay. But well done, the Ruskia, right? Молодцы. I was really excited. Yeah. Beat the Saudis. Marcy Shore is with us. Good morning to you, uh, you two sweeties. No boring ties this year. No, Marcy. Right. Okay. You're right. Try not to get your dad a tie, yeah. everybody. Uh, and you're welcome for this lovely music we're <laughs> yes. enjoying. Free of charge. Yes. Uh, Cynthia asked, did sister send her dad a card? Um, I did not. <laughs> I didn't send him a card. I, I usually call him, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, Phil Do not Har follow my example. Phil Harwell. Phil Harwell. Good morning, Sister Vasa and Rob. Good, Good morning, morning Phil. Phil. I think I'm going to close the window a little bit. I'm, I, I'm sure that's probably interfering a bit. No, I don't think you should you don't close think it. So? No. The trombone? Do you guys, does anybody want us to close the window? I don't know. No. Okay. Let because us when the gay pride cur parade parades mm -hmm. by, yeah. that's sort of going to be a little bit of a you know action-packed mm -hmm. scene. Yeah. I mean, we don't yeah. have all of that excitement usually. <laughs> that's true. Right? Hi, Rob. Keep up the happy happy space. Happy space. I, I do. He won't. Thank He'll you. be miserable in Berlin, but yes. we've told him. Lynn Tomlinson is with Tomlinson. us. Tomlinson. Lynn, I'm sorry. You know, he tries. He does. I try. Good morning hard. from Kansas. I have discovered I can't comment from my iPad, so I'm watching and listening on iPad type, typing on my computer. Ha, faster than using thumbs anyway. Thanks for all you do. Well, thank you, Lynn, yeah. for showing up. Appreciate right? going through all, jumping through those hoops for us. Guess who else is here? Dave Davis. Dave Davis is here. Hello, Dave. He says, I'm here. Yeah. But where is that is the question, right? Yes, exactly. It's good to see you, Dave. Michelle Platt is with us. Good morning. I listen to the podcast in the morning while getting ready. They're excellent. Oh, thanks a lot, yeah. Michelle. Everybody, check out the podcast. Do join us. Where? At Patreon.com. Everyone's doing it. Mm -hmm. Please join everyone. Yeah. Why? Because you don't want to be left out in the cold, all alone, shivering and lonely. Exactly. Okay? You, if you join us, mm -hmm. then you'll be all happy. Yeah. That's it. That's the difference between happiness. That's all it takes. Utter cold yeah. and loneliness. Five bucks a month. Five bucks a month, and it can all be yours. Yeah. So do it. You know why? Because? Because. You're worth it. Exactly. That's right. You are worth it. Go mm. ahead and do it. Nightingale 1962, Calimera, oh. from the Kalos reunion in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, cool. All right. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> and uh, we hope you're enjoying your reunion. Yeah. Deanna is with us. Hi, sister and Rob from Embarrass, Minnesota. All right. From Embarrass. Yes. Hello. Embarrass. <laughs> <laughs> all hello, Deanna. Lynn says, perfectionism comes up with my coaching clients, often from fear of rejection exactly from yeah. fear underlying this you know like underlying other forms of procrastination yeah. is um fear right mm -hmm. but it, it comes into people's personal lives in unexpected ways as well it makes people afraid of intimacy in, in um, intimate relationships mm -hmm. uh, it has really strange uh, it, when it rears its ugly head it can have very damaging effects on um on various areas of our life. So anyway, I wanted to, uh, I, I never talked about it before and I thought this would be an interesting topic. Yeah. So, wait a minute, Marcy has something interesting yeah. here. Ooh, you're so right about the disguises that cloak perfectionism. Wow, Sister V. No, keep... she says SV. Oh, she says SV. Wow, SV, keep calling it straight out. <laughs> Poor Rob. I'm glad we, we corrected that. <laughs> it's like J-Lo. Yes, the, the I want to have, I wanna have one of those cool nicknames, yeah. you know, but I don't think it really works. Oh, well, that's good. Wow, SV, keep calling it straight out. Once we see in the mirror for what it is, what will what will we do about it? Exactly. That's, that's the plan, huh? That's We've got to expose it. Yeah. When it pokes its head out of the ground. Right. All right. Let's see here. Um, Cecilia asks Sister Vasa, do all Orthodox nuns have to wear black, or do the colors change from country to country? Um. Well, I think as far as I've seen, it's black, but there's different, there's slight differences in design mm -hmm. of the head thing, you know, yeah. and it's not called a postelnik, for example, as it is with the Russians. Marcy. So Marcy says, yeah, right. Perfectly natural. Uh, neutral. She's neutral. talking about Perfectly my mug. Neutral. Oh, yes. Yes, exactly. 
<laughs> no, no leanings towards any particular team whatsoever. No, no. Uh, Lynn asks, I'm going to miss Rob a lot. Well, thank you very much. I'll miss you guys. Is there any way to pull him in for, for SML virtually? Yeah, possibly. Oh, yeah. by the way. We'll check that out. Mm, well, you know, he's not going to work for us anymore, so I can't really... He's not a volunteer, but um, we were interviewing people this week, and yeah. you know, I did ask for your prayers. At least I did on the audio podcast for um, this search for new assistants, and I think that I'm gonna split the position actually between two new people. So we did find a young man who looks very good to me. Um, yeah, cool. We will introduce you eventually to him, but I was very impressed with him. He did a lot of research uh, on the show. Yeah. He knew all about my CV and, yeah. uh, and <laughs> details that I forgot. Um, anyway, and, and a young woman. So we'll have two new people, mm -hmm. and uh, he is Irish. He's mm -hmm. really Irish to a funny extent. His name is even Patrick. Mm -hmm. he, he, he looks like it. Um, I asked him what nationality is, it is and I think Rob uh, joked I'm guessing Guatemalan meanwhile this is like this really red headed yeah. young man with an Irish accent that you could cut with a knife and uh, anyway so and then the young woman is Filipino yeah It'll be an interesting mix, you mm -hmm. know, and Anna's excited about both these two new people. Yeah. And Artie and Jenya are just mm -hmm. a bit out to lunch, so yeah. they're not really involved in this decision-making process. <laughs> yeah. Dear Bob, see, people always call you, yeah. often call him Bob. Yeah. Brother Thomas it is writes, Rob. Dear Bob, a.k.a. Rob, <laughs> I, I wish you a good start in Berlin. Maybe you could try to make a live show from both places, Berlin and Vienna together. Yeah, we could do like a global network of, of coffee with Sister Vasa. Let the global domination uh, domination begin. <laughs> the global. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yes. I I think Rob will be visiting uh, Vienna course. because you you have I love it here. a friend here. Yes. Right. So Terry Gillespie is saying hello, yes. Sister Vasa and Rob. Yeah. Great to see you. Great. Hello, Terry. Yeah. Hello, Always Terry. good to see you. Lynn Tomlinson. Lynn says thank you, Sister, for getting my name right. I love this music. Oh, you love the music? Cool. Yeah. See, uh, Rob hired a few friends of his to uh, march. Uh, in their bands, <laughs> I do what I just can. up and down the street past our windows. Yes. But actually, I think that these people are warming up for the gay pride parade. Yeah. Look, I don't know how you feel about the gay pride pride parade. I think it's very funny that our show is going on yeah. right as it's going to come by. Okay. Yeah. So I just think it's it's amusing. Mm -hmm. All o right. Onik is with us today. Hello to you all. Hello, Onik, brother Thomas. Brother Thomas says my dad gets funny socks from me every year. He never wears them, but he always says he loves them. Ooh. That's cute. I know. Isn't yeah. that what they always do? <laughs> cool. He's like, oh, how lovely. Yeah. Let me pin this to the refrigerator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> you made a drawing. Yeah. You're like, oh, what is this? <laughs> is it uh, an aardvark? No, <laughs> yeah. I just drew a picture of daddy. Oh, Tommaso is with us today, listening before going to work. God bless you, sisters and brothers in Christ. Hello, Tommaso. Yeah. Good to see you. Oh, Dave. Oh, he's in Harlem. No, Harlan. Harlan, a town in Iowa. That's okay, Dave, hello to you. I know he's mentioned Iowa Vienna before. Vienna well. to Harlan. Yeah. So, are we going to mention Bishop Ware and his article, Cynthia says? Well, we were going to actually mention mm -hmm. Bishop Ware and his article. I don't want to go there if it's going to get people in a non happy space, but it is Pride Day. All right, so Cynthia's asked the question about sort of an elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, I don't mean you, Rob. We actually do have oh. a wax elephant in the room. You want to show us the elephant? Sure. Show them the elephant. Just so you know, I didn't mean anything negative about it. <laughs> so, um, yes, does everybody know what we're talking about? Rob, you had a picture of some sort. There is this publication, everybody, The Wheel. Uh, I, I know, actually, this is not the issue that's at hand. Are you, did you show the elephant? I did. You Briefly. did, right? So let's put the elephant up here where we can see it. Like, maybe here is enough. I don't want him to get in the way here of our Christ icon. So, anyway, so there is an elephant in the room, everybody. Yes. I hope you enjoy that image. Um, so, there was an article in the latest issue of The Wheel. By the way, high quality thing here. I We subscribe, also we get the hard copy, but it's an online journal. You could look it up, The Wheel Online Journal, okay? Mm -hmm. Before, 
you um, get upset about this somehow. Maybe you're not going to get upset about it. Um, but I would urge us that this is not something to get upset about. All right? Um, the issue is on. Rob, you had this somewhere. Yes. The issue is on. Uh, let's see. The, the theme being being human, embodiment and anthropology, sex, marriage, and theosis. All right. So it's like gender issues, sex issues um, in orthodoxy. This is the, what the latest issue is on, okay? And uh, some heavy hitters in Orthodox theology, like Professor Father Andrew Louth, yes, the uh, Oxford professor and also professor at Durham, a good friend of mine, actually, who, uh, yeah, I've, I'm in, often in correspondence with him. He wrote me just today. Um, Metropolitan Callist to Swear, wrote the foreword to this issue. Everybody knows the name of Metropolitan Callisto Swear. Um, Father John Baer, uh, professor and uh, dean, until recently, I believe, of uh, St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary. I could name other names from this issue. I haven't read all the articles, okay? Um, but I did read the foreword by Metropolitan Callistos. Uh, and I read the excellent uh, editorial by Father Andrew Louth. Uh, these are minds and hearts uh, that are uh, brilliant, everybody, and that are not to be taken lightly. These are people who have contributed a lot to Orthodox uh, mission in this world, particularly amongst thinking people, amongst uh, intelligent people. Uh, Rob, could we get the picture up where yeah. I have a nice picture of one of the times I crossed paths with Metropolitan Callisto Swear. Uh, there he is in civil clothing, and there is my beloved mentor, Father Taft, uh, to, Fa to Metropolitan Callistus's right. Uh, yours truly is in the middle there, <laughs> the only one uh, wearing uh, her uh, garb. Uh, and that's Cyril Vassal, while he was still a priest. Um, a Now he is... A, Greek Catholic bishop, and that is uh, my friend, uh, also professor from Canada, Richard Schneider, uh, to the very right of us. So, um, well, to my left in the picture. Anyway, that was at, in Istanbul at an Orientali Lumen, Lumen conference where we were all speaking. Anyway, um, I have had the honor many times of speaking with Metropolitan Kalistos and uh, have also had the chance to observe his uh, piety. You know, sometimes God opens up to us uh, somebody else's virtue in a way that we might, that they might not have wanted us to see, of course, because of their humility. But I have sort of caught Metropolitan Callistos several times at conferences, reading his either morning or evening prayers, say when the whole group of us, we were traveling through uh, Turkey at one of these, uh, one of these uh, trips that I undertook together with Metropolitan Callistos because we happened to be together with a certain group. And, you know, if everybody was waiting at an airport or there were free moments or something, you could find this very pious monk, also a giant of an intellectual, um, reading his prayers. Uh, I just, I was very moved by his quiet kind of piety. Uh, one also observes this uh, sincerity of his, the way he celebrates liturgy and uh, other church services, his heartfelt, you know, proclamation of the words of the liturgy and of the gospel. Anyway, if you had a chance to uh, personally to meet face to face this great man, you might take pause besides the things that we know about his great contribution to people's coming to the church. Um, you might take pause before uh, sinking your teeth into something that he said or questions that he asked. See, in this issue of the wheel, Metropolitan Callistos actually just asks questions. He doesn't pretend to have all the answers, but in a way that a thinking person does, he asks questions uh, with regard to some things that look different to us today, 
in the area, for example, of uh, homosexuality and life decisions based on someone who uh, has, uh, you know, what, what some say you can't call it sexual orientation, but for lack of a better term, um, I'll use that term, someone who has uh, been given uh, that kind of uh, sexual orientation, he talks about uh, some questions that occur, as he says, where we enter difficulty, he says. But he doesn't give an answer to this, okay? So what I'd like to suggest is, are we, you know, can we perhaps not be ready to tear into someone who has perhaps also on occasion of Father's Day, um, has been a father to so many, okay? Um, can we, if we disagree perhaps, or if we are afraid of certain questions being asked, can we give the benefit of the doubt perhaps to one of our own? Or are we going to be so quick, as some have been, some bloggers and some of these voices in orthodoxy that aren't, I'm sorry, but they are not the peers they are not peers to this great scholar, nor are they the peers to a scholar of the magnitude of an Andrew Louth. Father Andrew Louth, in his turn, um, you know, I'm suggesting a little bit of humility, perhaps, with regard to uh, people who do, <laughs> do know their stuff, okay, and don't say things lightly. Um, I want to I wanna suggest to you, everybody, to read, if you're going to get into this, because it is a valuable issue. You don't have to be in agreement with all of it, but it's, it's an exercise in articulating certain questions that people do have. Young people also have these questions, okay? And they're getting answers elsewhere. So we can behave, as Father Andrew Lau quotes someone else saying, it's a very funny joke, he says, we can behave like... <laughs> as the double-headed Byzantine ostrich, <laughs> That's you know, sticking our head in the sand or just having a very stiff neck. He says, we don't have to behave as the double-headed Byzantine ostrich when we're faced with questions or challenges. Why are we faced with challenges and questions? Why are there... Some people want to pretend that there aren't questions. We have all the answers. Is that true? Is that true that we are finished, perfect works as human beings? Or do we still need a little bit of work? Do we still need to be developed? Of course we do. We are all God's precious works in progress. And we grow in our faith. We grow not only as individuals, but hopefully as church, right? Can we imagine that we as the church in this world have nothing else left to learn? Can that be possible? Then why are we even here, right? We have a lot to learn. If we don't have that thirst anymore, if we don't have the sense of our inadequacies, then how could we move forward, right? So S S Father Andrew Louth, whom I thank very much, as well as Metropolitan Callistus Ware, that both of these uh, persons, and they are persons, they're not just walking opinions. You know, in, in the internet, everybody, we set, tend to perceive one another as pure human opinion. Now, all of a sudden, some of these bl orthodox bloggers are just writing these treatises, these tirades against Metropolitan Callistos, like I read one recently. It's like the, this man, orthodox voice, and, you know, somebody obviously who thinks that he, he is to be the judge, of Metropolitan Callistos, he's writing almost like a, you know, this lament of the great fall of Metropolitan Callistos Ware, that no longer can we touch any of his works, we should get rid of the Orthodox Way, any book that we read of his, or, you know, that it's, that book has gone down downhill as, as it's been revised, because the story that this blogger wants to sell us, the narrative he wants to sell us, is this demise of a previously orthodox thinker instead of thinking perhaps God has given this orthodox thinker new insights. 
why do you think that that couldn't be true? This, this bishop and monk who has piously lived to old age, and by the way, who now is seriously ill, I'm talking about Metropolitan Callistos, going through debilitating um, therapy. I'm just mentioning that because there is a human being behind these opinions and articles that, that he did stick his neck out to write, yes, in his old age and in his sickness. Um, because he realizes, like thinking, a lot of thinking people do, that there are questions. We do have, uh, we, we do have uh, growth before us as a challenge, as a church, okay? There are things we don't know. We do have to remain teachable, okay? And as Father Andrew Louth points out, um, the reason we are challenged to think uh, about certain questions that are indeed upon which the dust hasn't settled is because we live within time, people. We live within what is called history. And certain things do change. And they change the way we perceive things. It doesn't change God, of course. It doesn't change God's truth. But we can't from a pastoral perspective also, but also from the ministry we have to our own selves, we can't ignore the changed uh, p positions, for example, of certain people. Um, for example, okay, for example, there are changes that have been brought about not by us, not by, you know, groups of feminists or homosexuals or anybody who planned these changes, but changes that have come about because of changes in technology. And an example that Father Andrew Louth mentions is the, the breaking of the link that has happened between sexual intercourse and childbearing. Okay, that, that link was broken, I think mainly because of the invention of the pill, right? But there are other uh, also reasons for this. This radically changed the position of wo women in families and in society, okay? There were also other shifts because of the two world wars in the professional positions of women, where women were given more responsibilities, women were compelled to be allowed to receive higher education, and that sort of thing. Anyway, a whole, actually, series of events, and now globalization, the accessibility of very, um, of a vast variety of cultures and ways of thinking. Um, all of this stuff now in the internet age has shifted um, the way we perceive things, the way we uh, perceive authority, the way we express ourselves. But the, the other things I mentioned um, raise issues that were not question that were not raised before specifically also about sexuality the whole aspect of life that has to do with gender gender identity gender roles these things uh, actually change in the way society approaches them and also we can't pretend that they don't change within the church when we say that they've changed in society so you have to uh, you have to face these questions as church already uh, as the questions are posed in a new way in a new light okay so um, Father Andrew Louth importantly says this is this is going to be the final point I want to share with you guys out there and urge us not to get angry about posing these questions okay um, he says it's very strange that the challenge of these questions is perceived by us Orthodox, is perceived to be coming from the outside, from the culture and society that surround us, almost as if we were not ourselves part of them. And I love that insight. He says, why do we perceive these as, as if they're threats from the outside? Aren't we part of these changes? Don't we, in our midst, have these changes and changed perceptions? Of course we do. So we should not pretend to be in this elite, uh, you know, little tower 
or elevated pedestal above the rest of the world as church because the church is left in this world. You know, it's like in the, the parable of the leaven or of the yeast, which a woman put into a dough until it permeated the entire dough. That's what the church is in this world. It's, you can't separate it. It's God's will that the church is to permeate the, the dough that is the whole world. So for, and us as members of church and being in this world is, is us following in the footsteps of our cross-carrying Lord. We are called to self-offering, okay? This does involve suffering in this world, all right? Christ's self-offering is supposed to shine through us, not through us trying to be special in the wrong way, you know, special in the way of um, sticking our heads really in the sand to real uh, and agonizing um, shifts, all right, shifts in um, the way we perceive things. We, you see, we have not brought about some of these changed perceptions. You know, you could say what you want and forbid all you want, um, something like contraception or worse, yes, uh, the horrible reality of and accessibility of abortion. Um, but you can't ignore that entire generations are growing up, okay, with easy access to these things. And God knows that that makes it a lot more difficult uh, for people, not only women, but, um, you know, the way, the way that they perceive um, sex, sex and sexuality and the way, the way they really perceive their freedom and some of, you know, the, the responsibility is much um, heavier and more difficult in our time. And God sees all these things and, and will uh, judge us accordingly, according to his mercy. But for pastors of the church, um, to pretend that none, nothing has changed, that nothing has to be looked at anew because of this break, like I said, and like Father Andrew noted, the breaking of the link, he says, between sexual congress, he calls it, it's a little bit funny, sexual congress, yeah. and childbearing. See, this is not something that we have brought about because we planned it so but it's, it's done. That link has been broken by and large in this world. You could, you know, you can yell and scream about it, but you have to realize that that has happened and you have to be able to speak about these things, recognizing. First, you have to at least recognize, you know, that that has happened. So I appreciate that Father Andrew simply points that out, okay? And finally, this is my main point, when I made this appeal to have, uh, to give the benefit of the doubt to some academic theologians who do bear the cross of, first of all, of seeing the gray zones, because some people don't really see uh, gray zones. You know, they see in black and white. So, you know, they just maybe are not burdened with um, too much... <laughs> too much information or knowledge or understanding. But it does cause one suffering to see certain problems, okay? And a great mind like Metropolitan Callistos or uh, Father Andrew Louth um, does suffer from recognizing the nuances and then speaking out about them and, you know, having people lash out at them despite their great contribution to Orthodox thought in our age. Now, I'd like to note that, you know, those of us who will easily attack someone who steps outside our box of, of thinking, and I'm not talking about speaking heretical things, no, I'm talking about certain issues of pastoral, uh, of a pastoral nature and of a nature that involves uh, church discipline that can be exercised in different ways, according to economia, okay, 
God's building up of his house, um, there is that principle in orthodoxy. For example, allowing for people to, heterosexuals to get married, not once, not twice, sometimes even three times, okay? We, this is not an uncommon phenomenon in our church. Um, where am I going with this? I'm trying to say something. I'm saying those of us who might lash out, uh, okay, at the drop of a hat at one of ours and excommunicate them from our hearts at the drop of a hat, right? We might, in other areas of our life, say in political life, express amazing, uh, really astonishing loyalty toward, say, a political leader. Today, one is often surprised that those of us, say, who are Republicans, right, um, diehard Republicans, um, Rob, um, you know, <laughs> we, we tend to back, say, our president, right, no matter what he says. I mean, some of us Trump supporters, it doesn't matter. He, you know, you can tell us, you know, what's he done this time? Mm -hmm. This time it's, he's been exposed. There's this story with a porn star. There's, he says uh, uh, just abominable things. If I had children, I wouldn't want them anywhere near, you know, mm -hmm. the, uh, a speech by, by this, this man. Even I pray for him and with God as my witness every single day and for Melania, you know, Donald and Melania, I'm always praying for them. God bless them, you know, but I'm just saying that if we can stick by just out of party loyalty, maybe, right, and dismiss and forgive and, and you know, still support a political leader, can we not have at least half as much loyalty to each other, to one another? Why are we so, we're really most malicious, I think, in, in the church, as far as I can see, in our own church, you know? But I've, you know, you know that on this show, I have stuck up also for Pope Francis when he was attacked by his own Catholics um, for supposedly mm -hmm. denying the existence of hell. Because people don't take the time to recognize the nuances. No, they're, for some reason, ready to attack a church leader far more ease, far more readily, I would say, than political leaders, you know? And I think, you know, we just just for our own sanity, you know, and for the exercise of charity and humility and all those things that we're challenged with in any family, in our church family, we also have to, we're challenged to exercise, despite our divisions, everybody, love. That's how the those who are approved or tested are, man, are revealed in the church. Those who are most... Uh, most reliable in God's church, as St. Paul says, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, uh, 11, uh, excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'll read to you this famous passage of St. Paul, where he says that there must be divisions amongst us, so that those who are tested or approved by God shall be made manifest to the rest of the church. So, how... It's this phrase, everybody. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 19. And indeed, writes St. Paul, there must be differences or factions. Heresies, he writes. Now, that's the word for heresies, but it means, in the context of first century Christianity, there must be differences or factions among you to show which of you are approved, or dokimi in Greek, which of you are approved or are tested and reliable, okay? Now, how can I pass that test and be reliable amidst our divisions? Well, when I don't slip into and fall in the temptation, everybody, to, uh, to turn against my brothers, fathers, sisters, and mothers. Not to turn against our family, not to let the enemy of our salvation so easily tear us apart. Because I turn around and I'm, I'll be friends and very forgiving and tolerant of all sorts of views. Oh, but the minute a deserving and accomplished Orthodox theologian who's brought so many people to the faith, like Metropolitan Callistos, oh, I will just, you know, I will so easily 
just scratch him from the book of life, you know, because of my shock and dismay, because he's dared to ask questions that I fear. Or that maybe I just don't see the same way. That's fine, okay? But let me broaden my heart and give him the benefit of the doubt, all right? Let's not eat up our own so easily, okay? Is that is that good? Can we do that? Maybe? Remember the, the issue that happened in the book of Genesis? The incident, I mean, when Noah, for the first time, drank wine? And he didn't know what the effects of wine are, because humanity had not yet tasted wine. And he got drunk, and his youngest son, Ham, laughed at him. Well, Ham was punished for that, because the other two brothers covered their father's nakedness, because Noah got drunk and was lying in his tent, um, in, you know, sort of a pathetic state. So um, that was the sin of Ham was the sin against the father, not covering his father's sin. Listen, I think the gay pride parade is upon us, is it? Um, we didn't plan this, everybody. This this huge gay pride no, parade happens in yet. Vienna once a year. It's not there yet? No. What's all the music? Is that your friends again, That's Rob? my friends. I got, yeah. Nobody knew jumping. Rob had so many friends, right? What's, what's <laughs> happening? But you paid them to do this. Oh, yeah. All right, so there's all this. You see, um, here's an example of a... Uh, of the kind of uh, wilderness in which we live here. So you think you have to close them? I think up? just a little but, bit. You, are they playing like on the lawn? You want to show us with the camera? No, I want to see. Is this oh, the, yeah? the is it some group? weird group? Everybody, we're still here with you. We're going to just check out what this is. I want to see. Trolley. Oh, the trolleys. Yes. Should I bring them oh, over? Oh, no, but listen, that was like a gay pride. Trolley. Everybody, we're coming back. Yes. Don't leave. Okay. Sorry. We have to uh, maybe... One second. Okay. Here we are again. Okay. Take that picture down, Rob. Mm -hmm. Everybody listen. So let's see if we have comments. Meanwhile, we're going to put up our website so you, you know if you want to get reflections on Holy Scripture, just brief ones every day via mm -hmm. email, just type in your email address here. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Who is commenting? All right. Okay, we here. got to Cynthia's question about Metropolitan yeah. Callistus. So Marcy says, close the window. Are you kidding? 76 trombones marching down the street? <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, of course, Rob. Yeah. We do want to hear that. <laughs> uh, Dave Davis says, where can I find the... Oh, where'd you... we already covered that. With we the... covered that. The... Dave um... Davis, you know, just look for The Wheel Online Journal, right? Yeah. You Google it. Uh, Love the funny socks idea. It just snapped down. Oh. <laughs> We got quite a few comments. Oh, quite a few comments in the. In the meantime, there we go. Um, love the funny socks idea, brother Thomas. I think, I think I'll start that. My 87-year-old dad will know what to do with that. Winky face. Fair enough. And let's see here. Oh, it'll take Alexandra yeah, Thompson Alexandra, is with us. It'll take two people to replace Rob. Exactly. Well, Indeed. actually, that's true. I do think he was a little bit overworked. <laughs> See, because I think the young woman will do, she's going to do correspondence and organizing my trips and stuff. And yeah. also, uh, she's going to manage the website, yeah. which needs updating all the time. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and then the young man will be doing more production type stuff right. and be there for the audio podcasts. Also, um, yeah, he's going to, well, I think Jania will still post the newsletter. Sure. Um, Artie will still stand in the corner and cry cry a little bit <laughs> no Artie is in charge of fitness <laughs> but um, I'm not sure exactly what that entails except yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's there right. sometimes at the fitness club <laughs> Lynn says if Patrick speaks with an Irish accent I'd vote for him well he really does yes. so I don't, I'm not sure how quickly I'll be able to uh, get him in front of the camera but <laughs> he's he's okay he's yeah I think he's he's not too shy <laughs> Wait, wait, who is that? That's all. It's uh, just um, commenting about uh, Vienna and Berlin. Like, how long is, is the oh, trip? Oh, Pac Bell. But yeah. we haven't said hello to Pac Bell. Oh, hey, Pac Bell. Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then... Um, no, Pete Vare. Oh, Pete's with us. Hey, Pete. I had some, some criticism of Metware's article, but I think he raises important questions in today's culture. 
our answers need to be more thoughtful than that of our fundamentalist brothers and sisters. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. Sergio hey. Avatar, Good greetings from Strasbourg, France. Hey, Spasibo hi. za eto piridaciu is a daily reflection. <laughs> so, Sergio, you're welcome. He's thanking me for this show. I don't know why, really, but um, everybody knows. <laughs> that I don't know. I don't show. know what everybody wonders. Is this a show? <laughs> what is this? It's the show of shows. It's it's just <laughs> I like to say it's a travesty. <laughs> Lynn. <laughs> Lynn says I'm excited to hear such things from our respected theologians and clergy. I rem I recommended uh, God and the Gay Christian by Matthew Vines regarding biblical re biblical references. Okay, I don't. I'm not familiar with that. So, thank you. Yeah. Uh, if somebody's interested, you oh, heard that. Yeah. Oh, it looks Sintrian like Sintrian says she yeah. agrees with his questions. Mm -hmm. It was a good article. Yes, he has. He makes good points. Mm -hmm. He's he's just asking questions. There's no. C can we ask questions? I mean, mm -hmm. really, we're not that weak in faith that we're threatened by questions by someone who has such love and a burning heart for orthodoxy as does Metropolitan Callistus. I remember. My mentor, Father Taft, saying, yeah, you know, because they were old friends. These are two giants, you know, uh, one a great Jesuit scholar and the other this great Orthodox scholar, Metropolitan Callistus. Anyway, and Taft would tease Metropolitan Callistus sometimes and be like, oh, Callistus. You know, like he would, <laughs> he would just tease the way he was this, you know, British uh, Oxford gentleman. Anyway, and Father Taft would tell me, you know, Orthodoxy really, it it changed uh, Callistus's like life. Um, it really, it's his life. It, it's totally meant everything to him, and his conversion was was very um, uh, powerful. Um, anyway, so he was always very uh, moved and impressed by his person. Again, not by his opinions merely, you know, uh, but by knowing this person face to face and certainly we have to remember that okay anyway i'm going on and on today dave davis is saying oh uh, pete was trying to send, uh, put a link to the magazine uh for father louth and father bear's contributions and dave is saying that he thinks the link has been blocked i think uh, putting links in live chat on youtube can be tricky and sometimes it doesn't doesn't work out dave davis says that he thinks the link has been blocked yeah. right um, Cynthia says, the LOL was me thinking I am finished and perfect. Oh, oh, are you? Yeah, see, we're late getting to the comments, yeah. so we're talking about perfectionism. Right. Pete Bear, amen, Sister Vasa. I have raised the same point among fellow Byzantine Catholic bloggers. We must distinguish between traditionalism and fundamentalism. We cannot allow fundamentalism to define us. Yeah. Amen. Pete Bear, again, it seems to be a common trend. My evangelical brothers and sisters also complain about fundamentalist attempts to hijack their expression of faith. I know, this is why I'm a little bit stumped by the whole Trump phenomenon and how some on the Christian right actually can be extremely magnanimous and generous as to what is acceptable in the political sphere as long as, you know, he belongs to our party. But when it comes to church life, the same generosity is not on offer. So I don't know. Everybody, just remember, there's the elephant in the room, and it's okay, right? Yep. Everyone's okay. We talked about him. Yes. We did, right? Yeah. He's not hurting anybody. No. Nope. And everybody's fine. Um, Pete Vare, I also clashed recently with prominent Latin mass liturgists personally attacking Father Taft's scholarship. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. And um, I know all about that crowd as well. Mm -hmm. Um even going so far as to deny Father's expertise as a Byzantine liturg liturgist. I know, and it's, you know, I, I don't know. It's sometimes <laughs> just, uh, sometimes the presumptuousness also of when you see some of these great masters being criticized. I'm not saying that they're beyond criticism, but a lot of the times you see that somebody has just completely misunderstood where the scholar is coming from. And oftentimes, a scholar is questioning uh, a certain... Uh, argument, right, presented by someone, because the, the scholar, is, it, not because the scholar has an agenda, because very often people might suspect you of having an agenda. 
like not so long ago, I commented on the female priesthood. And I said, I don't think the argumentation is correct to say that women can't be priests. But see, some people want to hear something that I didn't say. I didn't say, I want women to be priests. Mm -hmm. In fact, I said that we as church don't want women to be priests. But see, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that it's such a big deal uh, the fact that I pointed out what I see to be false argumentation because I find it annoying the false arguments and I would like to see a discussion that actually makes sense but you know some people want to hear what they want to hear and they don't understand that maybe just maybe but if they took pause and gave me the benefit of the doubt maybe they would try to see that what my what what my interest actually is and that's not an agenda it's the actual proper theology of the question all right because you know that's what i do I'm, I'm i engage in the study of theology and i share to the best of my ability not perfectly of course and not infallibly right my understanding is fallible but um i also witness to what i truly believe uh to be to be, you know, to be the, the, the accurate picture. Can I be mistaken? Yes, I could, you know, so I'm not. <laughs> and I think that you, beloved people, are zillions. Um, if, if you've, you know, followed this show long enough and our other programs, I think you know that, that statements here are not made in the spirit of, you know, superiority of any kind or from some kind of an ivory tower, nor do I think knowing also the person and the, the character of Metropolitan Callistos, nor does he presume in any way to be thunder from the mountain, you know? And I think that his meekness and humble approach, uh, you know, to the issues and humble witness to what he really thinks and not posing so somehow, uh, you know, should should uh, receive a like a like attitude towards him. I think that they're approaching, Rob. It sounds go. really loud. Yeah, We're going to show you time. everybody when they pass by with the gay pride parade. I think that it's a little bit Almost. hilarious. Still down the street Are they going bit. from there? Yeah. Oh, I thought they're coming this way. Uh -huh. No. Anyway, it's going to be loud, so uh, everybody stay tuned. Um, Amy is with us. Oh, Amy. Amy. Hello, Amy. Hi, Sister Vasa. Thank you for talking about talking to us about these things. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Sister Runiga from Chile. Yeah. Is, am I pronouncing that correctly? Now, that's a real tough one because I'm seeing... That's a good one. Yeah. Zuniga. 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 Yeah. All right. We're sorry. And it says S, so maybe it's Sister. Oh, yeah. Hello, Sister Vasa. She says, from Chile, Purple Heart light blue heart, light green heart. Should I continue? <laughs> There's all these hearts. And hello, Rob. Sunglasses. Hello, Rob. Thank you. Hello. Marcy. Yes, yes, and yes. yes. Capitalized yes. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy. Open hearts that hunger, thirst, seek, and question after God in this world. And in humanity, stay... Humility. Humility, stay teachable. What did I say? Humanity. Oh, sorry. Well, close enough. Yeah. Close enough, Rob. Yeah. Poor Rob. Oh. You try so hard, and try. yet, Sometimes. and yet he's not appreciated. I try right? some, yeah. Once now he's minute. leaving us because of that. Yeah. Are you leaving because of that? Uh, yeah, that was it. I foresaw this moment coming, of this 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 mix up, and in I thought despair. I just can't. Yeah, my perfectionist, the perfectionist <laughs> in me, just thought I can't do it anymore. Oh, Rob. Yeah. Everybody, <laughs> anyway, do pray that our transition goes well. No, we're, we're really happy for Rob. You know that he won the People's Choice Award here at some small, what is it called, the Short the Film? Vien yeah, the Vienna Short Film Festival. There's the Vienna Short Film Festival. Yeah, we got um, the People's um, Choice Award for an animated animated film that I drew. Yeah, Rob drew the animation for this popular mm -hmm. uh, film about political corruption here in Austria. Yeah. What's it called? Super Naked. Super Naked. It's not obscene, everybody. No, it's all one word. It's, it's called Super Naked, and if you find that YouTube video of the short film, mm -hmm. you'll see some of Rob's work. It's quite sophisticated. Yeah. And he did, did it you. in cooperation with certain leading newspapers here, yeah. and he's their you know, cartoon artist. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a fun story. Uh, Cynthia says, I have better hair than the president. Thank you. <laughs> Rob. I think so, too. Rob has better hair than the president. Yes. Well, 
the bar is very high there, so that's a very yeah. great compliment. <laughs> uh, Brother Thomas says, uh, thank you so much for your words today. Awesome. I think it's the best episode so far. Oh, well, thank you very well, much. Well, the bar is actually very low there, so no. I'm glad it's the best I episode. I like this show. <laughs> Rob likes the show. Smack on this show. I know. Well, you know, David Letterman introduced this kind of hosting of a show that's like anti-hosting. Yeah. He's always like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's try to get this over with, right? Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going for a Letterman impression or anything, but that's my sincere feeling about this. Oh, Julie Lucky agrees with Brother Thomas. Best episode so far. Thanks, Julie. Ooh, yeah. Of course yeah. I know your name is Rob. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I pressed the wrong key. No worries. That's okay, Brother Thomas. <laughs> Yeah. Brother Morris. <laughs> Brother Morris. Pete says, your defense of Pope Francis was appreciated by many Catholics, both Eastern and Latin. All right. Well, I don't think he should need my defense. <laughs> Such a holy man, right? Pope Francis, what a holy, inspiring man, yeah. as is Metropolitan Callistos. Is anyone going to get mad about that? Oh, that's going full all right. So... The, I think we're going to have to cut this short. Yeah. Why? Because it's going to be extremely loud, but we're going to show you yes. what the Gay Pride Parade looks like. Rob, just check that it's not obscene. One second. Yeah. Let's see, Marcy. Absolutely. No, Mike drops Cynthia. Right oh, it's mo motorcycles. Okay. Onyx says, I have a Christian Discord server where we discuss scripture and host. Um, and, okay, where we host debates if anybody wants to join i will leave a link on this video after it's over okay thanks cool. Onyx. Yeah, thank we're just gonna get the last comments nathan hello rob hello nathan yeah hello he's saying hello rob and sister vasa i just subscribed on patreon oh, yay great. everybody here give us the patreon link we're gonna put this up before we show you the gay pride parade do join just try it you could always unsubscribe but we need your mm -hmm. support we need to stay afloat yeah. everybody okay please consider it okay we will continue to provide you with contents, hopefully with motivation, information, mm -hmm. inspiration, just a little bit of confusion, all right, to keep you uh, on your toes, yes. right? Not too much, though, not too much. We do ask some questions. We don't, by any means, uh, look to uh, scandalize anybody's faith. No, just to, just to stimulate sometimes mm -hmm. in the ways that we ourselves are stimulated yet by questions, by challenges that God gives us. Okay, so that we grow, but certainly not. You know, I think you know, that never have we on this show um, uh, in, uh, diminished our faith. <laughs> okay, otherwise we would feel diminished in our faith ourselves. But um, you know, sometimes people do uh, try uh, very seriously to question the orthodoxy of those of us who, you know, have always been orthodox. And, and orthodoxy is our life. And uh, they try really to um, disturb and confuse the church authorities and to complain and try to get us shut down. And we don't share about that here, but uh, right now we are presented with um, some, uh, yeah, issues like this. And um, I find myself uh, having to defend what we do here and uh, would appreciate your prayers you know it's I, I don't think it's a big deal because it's really our internet age it's everything is a huge scandal and like the end of the world very easily we're judging one another very harshly and um, I think we need to walk through it and urge one another to t stop take pause all right take pause relax take a breath all right. In the meantime, we're gonna leave. We're, we're not leaving right away. Rob is gonna go and show us mm -hmm. this uh, this chaos. Yeah. Right? It's gonna be exciting. All mm -hmm. right. So Z J Dumick. Yep. Is here. All right. Cherry Chapman. Hugs to you, Rob. Karkurov is here. Thanks to you all. See you. Okay. Let's go and show you the 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 parade that's coming down. Oh wait. Let's just make sure that it. Oh. Oh my, the big bus. Wait, don't drop the computer out the window. I'll try <laughs> Do you see where the balloons are? Oh yeah. Crazy, everybody. Um, let's not forget that I think Argentina is still playing Iceland right now, and I'm going to get back to that game before church. 
See? So there is a bunch of people dancing on this bus, probably. Wait, can we see it? They are seeing yep. the bus. Mm -hmm. People are walking. It, it really stretches on for a while. This is the beginning of the, uh, of the parade. Mm -hmm. So they've shut down this part of the, the ring. It's the Ringstrasse. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a while. Um, yeah. The music. Okay, I think we've seen. Oh wait, some of the rainbow flags coming down. Oh, yeah. So you've seen a bit of Vienna today, everybody. Uh, it's the Gay Pride edition Ooh. episode of Coffee with Sister Vasa, right? Yes. Now that's going to be <laughs> quoted in the yeah. internet. <laughs> um, for the record, <laughs> Vienna I was home. Um, everybody, let's just get the last comments and say goodbye to our beloved supporters. Um, oh, Rob, look, your squid t-shirt is right in the... <laughs> That's cool. 1-1 one, one so far, says Amy. Okay, it's still 1-1. One, one. Oh, all right. Why did it skip again? Thanks for letting... Wait, Mars... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, we, we got them all. Yep. I'm going to... Oh, yeah, hello from London again. Hope Sister Vasa... Oh, I hope Sister Vasa, the video which sent, which I sent you this morning, God bless. Um, Amy says, I'll, I'll miss you guys too. No, Cherry Chapman miss you, is with Rob, us. She says, hugs to you and Rob from Paris. Oh, nice. Hey, Cherry, thanks. Yes. Hope Rob will keep us posted on his new life in Berlin. Indeed. We'll have him guest, you know, come as a guest yeah. to the show, perhaps. Mm -hmm. And Nightingale says, enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. And Marcy, thanks for letting us see a little of yeah, no, you. Love welcome. you. All right, everybody, goodbye. Do subscribe. Check out the link. Subscribe. Just try it. You yeah. can always unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. Don't be a why person. Be a why not person. Okay. And also, we still have the book. Yes. Show them the book. We have the book of daily reflections available mm -hmm. for you. And did you know that the book of daily reflections has come out in Romanian? Mm -hmm. But we posted about that on Facebook. The Romanians translated it and published it in hard copy. And the German translation has been ready for a little while. Mm -hmm. But um, it's getting the finishing touches to be put out on Amazon as an ebook, mm -hmm. the German translation. Okay, we're saying goodbye, everybody. Um, go Deutschland, okay, in the World Cup. They're playing tomorrow, and uh, we do look forward to that. Even though we do root also, well, we hope you are happy with the outcomes of whatever team you root for yes. out there, okay? We love all of you, um, and we're saying goodbye. I'm Sister Vasa, and this is Rob. Is Rob, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yes. <laughs>